Hello and welcome to Financial Markets Insights. Today we look at the subject of business change optimization in the banking, finance and insurance sectors, with a particular focus on digital transformation. The prevalence of the internet and mobile communications in today's society has led to the rise of fintech and more recently insurtech as the finance and insurance industries adapt to this changing landscape. But with many incumbents in the sector relying on legacy technologies and legacy business models, what are some of the challenges that they face? And how can they go about addressing these challenges in order to evolve to a multi-channel organisation? First of all, I suppose we have to mention fintech. Uh, Fintech aren't encumbered so much by the regulatory environment. Uh, They're creaming off the high margin products from the retail banks. Um, They're also... a digital appeal for the uh, demographic generation of millennials. So there's a lot of action in the fintech market which is threatening the bank's traditional services and particularly payments and peer-to-peer payments. So the, the challenges facing retail banks are quite, uh, quite amazing in terms of overcoming the, the new force. Um, they suffer a little bit from legacy management thinking and legacy IT. I think the Prudential Conduct Authority uh, advised, recommended that they should look hard at investing in technology to address some of the requirements of their customer base. When considering digital change, organisations need to consider three important factors. The first factor being, are you changing the right things? So this comes back to ensuring you're aligning your digital change agenda to your strategic aims. Second point is, are you changing things in the right way? So this comes back to how you execute change. Do you have the right skills, the right people to execute the change? Sometimes you may need to engage with external consultancies or experts to help bolster this capability. And finally, are you ready for change? And this involves making sure you have the right level of change maturity to go ahead and implement the change. So this includes having the right leadership, the right culture within the organisation to absorb the change, uh, to ensure that the change is successful. Leadership and culture are obviously key elements when it comes to digital change. But what does this mean from a project, process and people perspective? It's important to have a clear view of what your digital change agenda looks like. So this includes prioritising the relevant projects to enable that digital change. And quite a lot of time this involves looking at your business capabilities. So, for example, if you want to uh, gain some sort of strategic advantage, you need to look up what business capabilities will enable that. And that may include uh, creating something like a new digital brand for certain customers. Or you may be, on the the flip side, you may be just trying to enhance certain business capabilities to deliver things in a more effective way. Getting your staff and customers bought into what you're trying to achieve uh, means that they'll adopt it, they'll uh, contribute towards it. Uh, I have this view that uh, a business uh, has a change at two levels. There is a macro change, which is that vision. It's that clarity about what we're trying to achieve as an organisation. And then within it, you'll have um, micro programmes of change that dovetail to that larger agenda. Uh, That means uh, those uh, entities, those micro projects are under the the guidance and steerage of people in the organisation. That means they're empowered. And any, any guy from HR will tell you if somebody's engaged, empowered, they feel like they matter, they know where they're going, they're going to be much more productive. So we've looked at some of the considerations from the point of view of the organisation. But what about customers? How can firms align their digital transformation programmes with customer needs? One of the things that our customers always say to us, make it simple, make it clear, Make me understand why I can't do things in one process, not two or three. Um, And so by listening to our customers attentively, we have to design different ways in which we can simplify our products and our process. And people are much more exacting through digital channels. They don't get up in the morning and enjoy doing insurance or enjoy doing banking. They have to. But if we can make it simple and an engaging process that's really simple to understand they won't begrudge doing it and will come back to us more, hopefully, than some of their competitors. Firms obviously need to look outwards towards their customers and inwards towards their own organisations when undergoing digital transformation. But there is a third factor, and that's looking across the industry for opportunities to collaborate, particularly in the adoption of new technologies such as blockchain, for example. 
In the past, a lot of the collaboration was driven by perhaps market utility, like Swift, as an example. These days, um, you're, you're getting individual firms talking to each other and then bringing other firms in um, and looking to collaborate around a particular point of technology or a delivery because they don't want, don't want to or can't afford to do it themselves. So there are quite a few that are springing up at the moment. I know probably two or three new utilities that are coming on. Um, but again, that seems to be some of it's around blockchain, but a lot of it is still around dealing with the, um, the pressures of delivering the business right now. Um, and, and documentation is key, but the big issue around that is identifying the client. So if you have a digital identity, a lot of that problem will go away. But if you look at the sort of the settlement life cycle, if you take the DTC, for example, I think their systems are factored around 800 million trades a day. Now, the question mark is, can blockchain deliver the same? So what are the key success factors around digital transformation? What can make the difference between a successful transformation program and one that fails? Digital transformation, the optimization of business change, business change optimization, must look at the holistic view of the whole process with the customer. Taking a customer-centric view, the marketing to the customer, the selling to the customer, uh, setting up the customer, provisioning, fulfillment, delivering the service or the product, whatever it is, a payment, a loan, a mortgage, insurance, we're talking financial services here, uh, supporting the customer from, through multi-channel and then remarketing. And it's about uh, uh, retaining your customer, growing your products with your current customer base, but most importantly, expanding your customer base. So it's retain, grow and expand. Uh, and this is the key mantra that financial services need to take. And then you do also go into partnership with some of the fintechs as well. If you take your, as a C, the, C, the chief change officer, and I've seen this title advertised, is the CEO. It is the board. They are the empowerers of change. And they have to keep up the momentum about in continuous improvement, continuous change. Uh, so if, if, without that momentum, things will grind to a halt, and that, that leadership. And that, that is the most successful thing. The thing I say to people when I talk about momentum is, you can't change the direction of something if it isn't moving. You're just pointing in a different direction. That's not change. That's just signalling. It's clear that digital transformation in banking, finance and insurance is a huge topic with many elements to consider. But maybe three of the most important are to align the change programme with the strategic aims of the organisation, to treat the transformation as an ongoing process rather than an end in itself, and to put the needs of the customer first. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.